welcome to another episode of The Clueless Traveller. Uh, this episode is coming from Egypt. Um, it's Saul's birthday on this coming Tuesday, so I surprised him um, by taking him on this Nile cruise. So we're starting in Luxor, um, spending a few days there and seeing the sights, then heading down to uh, Komombo, then Aswan, then Edfu, then back to Luxor, and then we're getting off the the boat and then spending two days in a hotel in Luxor as well. So you're going to be seeing lots of amazing sights. Um, we're doing all the tours and really, really looking forward to it. It's going to be lovely because it's been a long time since we've done an episode. So we're happy to be back. So we've just been to the Valley of the Kings on the west bank of the Nile and I've been told that the Valley of the Kings is on the west bank because obviously the sun sets in the west and the ancient Egyptians believed that when the sun was set, um, obviously that was resting time, so it's a perfect place to bury their, their dead pharaohs. Um, very sacred place, we managed to go into three tombs with the group and also we paid extra to go into King Tutankhamun's tomb and saw his mummy, which is incredible, he's just you know, under glass, his face and his feet are, he's absolutely tiny, which is amazing, and also into the tomb of Ramesses VI, um, and one of them that we went into was very, very deep, um, struggling for breath down there, but amazing, absolutely incredible. Behind me here is the Royal Lake that was used um, by the royals, I guess, for uh, purification, or nowadays would be swimming. Um, and our tour guide, Radwan, Horus! just told us that um, it was actually the ancient Egyptians that first used the gravity pipes and not the Romans that we've all been led to believe. So We're walking around this scarab beetle here now three times and that's for a healthy life. And Radvan also made a joke and said if you're single and want to marry you walk around five times and if you're married and want to divorce it's seven. So Saul's doing three, I'm going to go for seven. One of the interesting <laughs> things that Radwan told us about these obelisks that you can see right there, there's one remaining there and you can see right beside it there's an empty uh, base uh, where you, there would have been another obelisk and there's two on the other side. One of those obelisks is in Turkey out front of the Blue Mosque and the other one is in the Vatican City in uh, St. Mark's Square. Um, St. Mark's, right? Love? St. Peter's. St. Peter's, thank you. Sorry, I knew it was wrong saying. Anyway. I think. Um, anyway, Rodwan was also saying that they've that Egypt has asked for those obelisks back, but neither country will send them back. So we stood in front of Ramesses II, as Saul just said, and the smaller statue at his feet is his wife, Nefertari, and the, um, the queens were always very small, because obviously men had power. Um, his arms are crossed to show that he's dead, and his feet are together to show that he's dead, and the items that he has in his hand symbolise that he was the uh, pharaoh of Upper and Lower Egypt. You can see how much larger the statue of Ramesses is then his wife. His men were powerful. Not like now, I'd be much bigger than you. Of course. Yeah. You would, you I'd would, be Ramesses. You would tower over me, wouldn't you, love? Too right. So today we're at the Komombo Temple. Yeah? Did you want yeah. me to say that? Good. Yeah. And um, this is a calendar. Um, the dashes were days of the, the week. You can see there. There were 10 days in their week, three weeks in a month, and 12 months in a year. So they had 260 days, no, 360 yeah. days in their year. Um, so five days short of the hours, but the farmers in um, Egypt now still go by this calendar. Okay, so with the cartouche, and the way you read it, if it's vertical like this, it will have a feather first, and you know that that's the start of it. So this one you read upwards, and if the feather was there, you'd read down. And with the uh, horizontal ones, if there's a face at the front, you read that way, or if the face was here, you read this way. So this one here, they were saying, um, is about one of the kings or the gods' life and birth. So this is his mother giving birth. You can see his head and his hands there. Okay. Um, again, this is all about the birth and that he was a boy. Yeah. And signifying Egypt as well. Yes. And then just here, this symbolises milk or water, whereas in his case it would be milk. And it shows that he had milk for two years. And as he was growing up, he had two babysitters. Images of the ladies here. And then I think he said this was to symbolise strong. Yeah. So he became strong. And then this is his name. That's his cartouche to say that he became king, right? Yeah. And that's his name there. Amazing. So I'm pretending that I can read it, but really we were told that before. So this bit here is a medical wall, um, 
Axel's going to have to help me because I'm a bit small. There you go. They are, I can't see what they these are. are. The, these are the cuttings. These are like the scalpels that you used to cut. That's it. And these symbols next are two needles to sew back up. This one's to check your tongue when you go, ah. Yeah, it's the ah. So these go. were to check your bones, wasn't it? He said they yeah. were like little cups that they placed yeah. on you. Uh, above that was to pull your teeth out. These ones the are for the dentist. <laughs> and gloves, and medical, medical gloves. gloves. And the scales to weigh things. Yeah. And then above that we have um, to take your appendix out. He said that would be put in beside you and opened up and it would work like a grabber and he said obviously it would grab something put it out if it wasn't right it wasn't the appendix they'd just put it back in again so it wouldn't and, be attached yeah, but and try again body. Yep. yeah and then next to that believe it or not they had enemas this one right here yeah oh and the ones on the left with the hooks that's it they used those to put up the nose and to pull people's brains out. Yeah, that was for the part of the mummification. Yeah. He said that's why their mummies all have that pained expression on their face because they're having their brains pulled out. <laughs> so it's pretty incredible to show you that they had all of that. And really, some of those haven't even changed what we use now. You know, like the dentist thing. Absolutely amazing. This here was the sacrificial altar, and they um, offered wine, beer. Uh, water. They also sacrificed animals that they didn't worship, which really, they worship most things, didn't they? So they well, did they mention buffalo. They, they did worship things they were afraid of. Yes, um, they obviously there were crocodiles in the Nile, so one of their gods was a crocodile god. But they definitely worshipped buffalo here, and also... Sacrificed. Sacrificed, sorry, I'm getting confused. And they also sacrificed uh, humans. If they had um, attacked Egypt or... Fought against Egypt. Four times. And the way they told this, which isn't really very reliable, was just if they had, um, you know, marks on their arms or they had fingers cut off or... They, each, each time they fought against Egypt and were caught, they would leave a mark on yes, them. So Either be able to tell. take a hand off or burn them in the arm or take a testicle and yes, the, to stop them um, uh, reproducing yeah, again and it, creating it, more fighters. It wasn't like torture like they would do now. They, they did it very practically so that they couldn't reproduce to have more people to fight against Egypt. Yeah. So, uh, yes, a bit gruesome, but uh, I guess it worked for them. And this temple was for the god Horus um, on this side. And this side was the crocodile god. Wow. And Horus is the god, if you see in any of the hieroglyphics that we show you, with the hawk head. That's it. Human body with a hawk head, but nothing above it. Because the god Ra looks exactly the same. He's got a human body, a hawk head, but he's got a sun over top of his head. Yeah. Crazy. So now we're going to see, go and see um, mummified crocodiles that are here, obviously, to represent their crocodile god. Behind me you can see um, some of the mummified crocodiles. And um, ancient Egyptians believed that parts of uh, Sobek, the um, crocodile god, was alive in life, real life crocodiles. So obviously when a crocodile died, they then believed that the god part transferred into another live crocodile and therefore they had to mummify and give a you know, proper burial to the dead crocodile. And uh, they had a special crocodile cemetery um, which they discovered, I think they said it was about 300 odd mummies, mummified crocodiles in there, so. And some of them you can see behind Catherine there. loads of them. symbol which is about three hours um, outside of Aswan which meant us getting up at three o'clock this morning and then leaving at 3 30 with a convoy of other coaches so obviously it's a long journey so they're security protected um, Abu Simbel uh, the name means father of symbol and basically when the temple was created um, for the workers and etc to live they created a town and that sprung up because of the temple so therefore the temple is called Abu Simbel Father of Symbol, and Symbol was the town. And what was Does the ancient sense? name? The ancient name, I can't remember. So Saul's going to go with that one. Uh, I'm, I'm probably going to butcher this, but it's, I think it's Bar Ah. Sounds about right. And it means great house. That's right. That's right. 
Um, so the temple behind me was for Ramesses II, the great pharaoh, who hadn't died and wasn't a god, but he decided to create this to make himself a god. A well. living god. A living god, yes. And then I'm just going to do a little sidestep. I'll come back. This one behind oh. here oh, is um, for his wife. <laughs> Not that way. That was Queen Nefertari. And uh, Ramesses had 55 wives, believe it or not. And what was it we were thinking? A hundred and... He has 110 daughters and 96 sons. That's right. And he had so many wives and um, there were political marriages. Um, he had a wife um, from every uh, major and rich family and powerful family in Egypt and also of the countries that he invaded so they wouldn't invade him back. So he was a sensible man, if not a little bit crazy. So I'm just going to sidestep again, sorry. <laughs> so this temple had to be moved when um, the dam was built again. So if you can see behind me, this is where the temple originally was, obviously underwater. 65 meters down. Yeah, they moved it to this site now, 65 meters. Absolutely amazing. Um, unfortunately, we can't film inside because the colors in there are still so vivid and obviously they're trying to protect it. It's Egyptian night tonight. We're dressed in our galabayas. buried in sand and obviously it was underneath and um, they had no idea it was here and villagers built a village above it and then I don't know if you can see above me here there's holes in the ceiling and obviously the homes were above that and they used to use that as a way to dispose of waste and um, they used it to cook um, as a form of heating in the winter believe it or not and as a form of cooling the house you can see behind me that some of the reliefs um, pictures have been scratched out and that's because um, at some point in the temple's history Christians came here um, to protection I guess for one of the wars or battles. They, this is where they hid from Roman persecution that's right and um, they thought that these uh, reliefs were ghosts so they scratched out the faces so that the ghosts couldn't see them, and they also uh, scratched their legs. Oh, not on this particular one, but some of the others, so well, that you, they couldn't you can, walk. You can see that they've, the they've scratched out his hand so that they can't, so that he couldn't grab them, yeah. and they've and the feet destroyed the feet so that it couldn't chase them. Yeah. through the lock at the minute and um, we've got the traders down here on their boats following us they're actually hooked onto our boat and we're pulling them through and they're throwing their wares onto the deck and then we're throwing them back to them and it's, they were running along inside the lock weren't they yeah. nearly getting crushed and it's just it's not a way to make a living the poor guys oh, no. hey, <laughs> Are you just throwing it straight back? Yeah. <laughs> We're at our hotel now on the banks of the Nile for a relaxing two day break because as you've seen in the last seven days we've been exceptionally busy with all of our excursions so this is much much needed. Um, we're not going to be up to much, um, obviously, other than relaxing, but we will include some pictures of the hotel for you. Um, so thanks for joining us uh, for another episode, and uh, we'll see you again soon for another episode of The Clueless Traveller. And I do realise I've just said that twice. <laughs> Bye!